Well, hey friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about how to declutter and organize your iPhone. And I think that this is one area where a lot of people try to ignore the clutter. They'll pack their home screen filled with apps and half-hearted attempts at organization. And that results in devices that are super messy, where it's difficult to find what you need and they're hard to use intentionally. But it doesn't have to be that way. In the same way that decluttering and organizing your home can make it just a whole lot more practical and user-friendly, the exact same thing goes for your phone. So today I want to share with you some of the tips and tricks that I like to use to declutter and organize my phone so I can keep it simple, functional, and beautiful. And I'm excited to get right into this. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and let's get started. So starting off with both my home screen and my lock screen, I like to use simple photos that coordinate well with each other. It's really important to me that they aren't too busy because I find that pictures that have a lot going on really do add a whole lot of visual clutter. And if you look at them closely, I tend to gravitate towards pictures where most of the action is happening in the bottom third to the bottom half. I really like for the top portion of the pictures I use to have almost nothing going on. That way it's not distracting at all from the time or the apps. And then for me at least, I really find the lock screen and home screen to be a great opportunity to kind of personalize my phone, make it feel more me. So something that I like to do is to use pictures of different places that I've been. So right now, both my home screen and my lock screen are from a trip that we took to Italy last year. My lock screen is from Pienza, and then my home screen is from some beautiful fields that we came across in Tuscany. And for me, those images add a really beautiful personal touch, and they bring a smile to my face whenever I see them. But then looking more specifically at how I organize my apps, I like to keep everything on two pages. And the home page is where I like to keep my most frequently used apps. These are the ones that I'm reaching for daily, if not multiple times a day. And then the second page is where I'll keep my frequently used apps. And these are the ones that I'm still reaching for several times a week. And realistically, there definitely is space here to fit all of the apps onto one page. But personally, I really like the feeling of simplicity and white space that's created by storing them in two separate ones. And then also too, from a practical standpoint, this also makes my most frequently used apps just easier to see and more accessible. And we'll talk more in a minute about how I decide which apps to keep versus which to declutter. But first, I want to touch on how I organize my home screen. So first, on my home page, I have three rows of apps, but within each of those rows, I have individual clusters where I've tried to group like apps together. So if you look at the first row, messages and Instagram are kind of where I chat and communicate with friends. Camera and photos naturally go together. My clock and my calendar help me manage my daily schedule. Again, notes and reminders I pair together so frequently as one kind of bleeds into the other. And then Gmail and Slack I use for kind of a daily communication, more on a work basis. And so even though I haven't used folders here, what I've tried to do is basically to group apps together in a way that makes sense and creates kind of a logical flow as I'm looking at the home screen. And I've kind of touched on this already, but for both my home screen and the secondary screen, I like to keep them both to a maximum of three rows. So essentially I'm using just under half of the real estate of the screen. And the reason that I do that is I like to have that visual breathing space so it doesn't feel like the screen is really cluttered and I can easily see everything. I find that when the entire screen is just packed full of apps, it's really hard for my brain to process everything that's going on. And then I guess the last thing for the home screen that I should touch on briefly is the fact that I don't use widgets and that's actually an intentional choice. Maybe it's just the minimalist in me, but personally, I really love the simplicity of having all of the apps the same size. And then also, I like to think of my phone as a tool and really try to prioritize function. And for me at least, I definitely find my phone more functional when there aren't a ton of widgets all over the place. No one thing is taking up too much attention and it's all really easy to see and easy to access. Okay, but then moving on to the second page, I have just a couple other essential apps out here, and then I like to keep everything else in folders. And like you would imagine, I use the folders to group some of my more frequently used apps together by kind so that I can have easy access to them. 
The one thing that you will note here is that I like to make sure that none of my folders have more than one page to them. And again, that just helps make sure that I can see everything all at once and it helps to keep things streamlined. And then something that I did purely for aesthetic purposes was that when I named all of the folders, I made them all lowercase with a space between each letter. And I just think that that kind of adds to the personalization. So really I did that for no other reason than I just like how it looks. All right, so that's how I organized the home screen. But now I want to take a minute to talk about how I decide which apps I'm going to keep versus which to declutter. I like to think of all of my apps as being in one of four categories. There are my daily use apps, the ones that I'm using several times a day. My frequently used apps, these are ones that I'm pulling up multiple times a week. And then I have occasional use apps, which normally I'll use on a monthly basis or every couple of months. And then I have my one-time use apps, which are things that I'll download for a specific event that I probably won't need ever again, or if I do, it's going to be several months or years down the road. So those are the categories, but then depending on which one a specific app falls into, there are a few different things that I'll do. So first, for any daily use apps, I like to keep those on the home screen. Then for the frequently used apps, the ones that I'm using multiple times a week, I'll put those into folders. Then for the rarely used apps, I like to hide those so they're off of my home screen, but still stored on my phone. All of the information is there, they're there for when I need them, but they aren't creating visual clutter on the screen. And the way that you can access them is just to swipe all the way over to the left, and then just in the search bar, type the name of the app that you're looking for. So SeatGeek is an app that helps you find good deals on concert tickets. And it's not something that I use all the time, but occasionally I do like searching concert tickets on there. So I have it hidden, it's there, it's ready for when I need it but it doesn't need to live on my home screen. So that's why I like to keep those occasional use apps, that way they're accessible but not distracting. And then for those one-time use apps that I downloaded for a specific purpose that I don't necessarily see myself needing again anytime in the near future at the very least, I like to just delete those. And honestly, I do tend to delete apps pretty liberally. If I can't see myself using it in the next couple of months, I'll just go ahead and delete it. The nice thing about apps is you can always re-download them later. They're really isn't a ton of risk involved, and it just helps to simplify your phone. So those are the four categories, the four actions, and it might seem like we're making pretty linear decisions here, very cut and dry decisions, but personally, kind of like we were talking about earlier, I like to view my phone as a tool. And so basing those decisions of what I'm going to keep versus what I'm going to delete strictly based on the actual amount that I use an app really is something that I find helpful. We're kind of taking the emotions out of it a bit and just trying to view it from a practical standpoint. If I'm not using it, I don't need to keep it and it's just causing a distraction. So that's kind of the strategy behind how I decide which apps to keep versus which to declutter. But then I left a few down here so we could kind of walk through an example. So first we have the Coinbase app. This is something that I downloaded and I think I've used once, maybe twice in the past couple of months. So realistically, this is something that definitely falls into the one-time use thing. I haven't used it, so we're just going to delete it. Okay, the next app, we have the Uber app. This is something that I use occasionally, but honestly, not all that frequently. So I'm going to remove it from my home screen. That way I can just search for it if I need it, but it doesn't need to take up real estate on the homepage. Then we have the Catan Universe game, and here's my little nerdy moment for you. I actually love playing Catan on the app. It's really fun for car trips, things like that. And it's definitely something that I use weekly. So because of that, we're going to move it in here to the little miscellaneous folder I have. And then finally, we have the Priority Pass app. This is something like the Uber app that I reference occasionally, but probably not more than once every few months. So we're just going to remove it from my home screen. And then we've got a beautiful, simplified and streamlined setup. All right, so that's how I generally organize apps, but now I want to go into some specific advice on how you can declutter and simplify some specific apps on here. So first, for the weather app. And that is some gross weather that we're having today. But if you come down here to the cities, what I'd recommend doing is just removing any cities that aren't really relevant that you don't need the weather for. A lot of times I'll add these for specific trips, but you really don't need to keep them there. Then for photos, realistically, we could do an entire video on this. But a few quick things that you can do are first scroll to the bottom and get rid of all of your recently deleted photos. You can just do select, delete all, and then you're good to go. Something else you can do is to delete all of your unused albums. So you can just go through and see if there are any that you don't really use or that you don't need anymore. 
And then of course, if you want to keep things more organized, you can always group photos into albums. I love doing that for things like trips that I've been on and different years even, highlights from that year, things like that. And then obviously deleting old pictures and videos that you don't need is a great way to simplify as well. And as an added bonus, this is one of the easiest ways that you can create more space on your phone if you need it. Okay, but then moving over to the clock, there are two big things that I recommend doing here. First is to delete any unnecessary alarms. If you get up at the same time each day or you know that you need specific alarms, by all means, like, keep those. But if you have some that you set like one time, I think Christopher has an alarm set for like 12, 15 a.m. No, it's like 12, 13 a.m. It's, it's so dumb. But if you have any of those ultra specific alarms that you know that you're never going to need again, just go ahead and delete those. Again, this is just one way of making sure that you're keeping things simple on here. And then the other spot to pay attention to is the world clock. Personally, I find it really helpful to have one for Athens, for Paris, and for Seattle because those are the time zones that I tend to be communicating most with people in, but I have no idea why I have Milan and Buenos Aires here. So we can go ahead and remove those, keep the other four, and just keep the ones that make sense for you, the ones that you're regularly using in meetings. Then for calendars, one quick tip here is to go to the calendar section at the bottom and make sure that you only have the ones that you want to see checked. If you have multiple calendars on your phone, I know a lot of people will have multiple different holidays on there. So then if you look at say Juneteenth or Father's Day, something like that, it shows up like eight different times on your phone, which it doesn't need to be that way. Just make sure that you uncheck all of the holidays ones and any others obviously that you don't need. Uh, and then something else to note here too, if you like the more aesthetic organization style, is you can create custom colors on here too. So if you like a specific event or a specific calendar being one certain color, you can customize that as well. All right, then for notes, we'll keep things simple here. Obviously delete any notes that you no longer need, but then I also love using folders to group notes together just to keep things organized. I organize a lot of my life here, so I really find the folders to be just one of those like game-changing things that makes the space so much more intentional. And then with reminders, again, you can just clear out any that you don't use. But then something that I like to do to kind of customize this a bit are to pick a specific icon and color for each of the reminders that I have. So I like kind of this gray one. It feels very aesthetic, very simple to me. And then I'll choose whatever icon I feel like best fits with the specific list that I have. And then something that I like to do if you don't need all of these reminders is just to leave them unchecked. And that makes the space just feel very clean. Okay, but then moving down to your internet browser, personally, I have Safari, but whether you have Chrome or something else, it's always a great idea to go through and clear your tabs every so often. We can have a lot of these accumulating and it can make things hard to find. So keep only the ones that you're actively using and then you can just close out the rest. Then the last app that I've got a quick tip for is the wallet app. You just want to go to all of your expired passes and then take a quick second and clear all of those out. So at this point, we've talked about how to organize your home screen, some strategies for specific apps, but then there are a few other important ways that I want to touch on that you can really simplify your phone and use it more intentionally. The first of which being to turn off notifications. And in my opinion, this is the number one biggest thing that you can do to begin using your phone more intentionally. Because if we're being honest, notifications are really just one massive distraction. Or actually more realistically, it's like hundreds of small distractions multiple times a day. So to turn your notifications off, you're just going to go to settings, hit notifications right at the top. And for the most part, I like to keep all of my notifications off. And that's true for pretty much everything, but especially social media, because I really just find that the fewer notifications I get, the fewer distractions I'll have. So really the only things that I'll keep notifications on for are things like my phone messages and then also my financial apps because I like the kind of like fraud alerts that I'll sometimes get from them where they'll make sure I'm verifying purchases. So I do have those ones on because I genuinely find them helpful. So I'm not going to set a specific rule here for exactly how many apps you should have notifications on here. But the general rule I would say is that less is more. The fewer notifications have, the easier you'll find it to use your phone with purpose. Okay, and then 
let's wrap this up by just talking quickly about two other areas that personally I like to customize to really enhance the usability of the phone. And the first is the widgets. To get there, you're just going to scroll all the way over to the left and you can just easily edit this area by clicking edit or holding down like you would to edit your home screen. And you can figure out exactly what makes sense for you to have in here. So personally, I like to keep things really simple. The iPhone comes with a number of these already on there and I actually deleted most of them because I felt like it really cluttered up the space. The only things that I have here are recommended apps. So it's going to remember which apps you opened most recently or which ones you searched for most recently. It's going to show those. And so that's kind of like, kind of like a short key almost. So I enjoy having that one there. I have the weather and my calendar there. And that way we're just keeping things simple. I can use this space intentionally, but obviously you can add more to that if you find other potential widgets helpful. Okay, and then the last area that you can customize is when you swipe down on your screen, you've got four little kind of widgets at the bottom here. You can customize those as well. You can just come over to utilities, go to settings again. I guess we're still at notifications. So we can scroll down over here, go to control center, and then you can see, you can kind of change up the order that you want them in. So if you want to move low power mode, all of that. And there are also some really cool ones that you can add in here as well. Maybe you like hearing what song is playing and you want to turn on the music recognition one. If you have an Apple TV, you can have the remote easily accessible, turn dark mode on and off and a lot of other things. Personally, I've chosen to have the flashlight, low power mode, screen recording and camera. Those are the ones that I personally use most frequently, but it is something worth noting that you can customize that just again to make sure that you're making the things that you use most frequently the most accessible. I think that's really the key here. All right, well, that's it. I know this was a pretty comprehensive look into how I declutter and organize my phone. These are all things that I've kind of learned over the years and hopefully you'll be able to take a tip or two away from this to really be able to make your phone a bit more simple and a bit more intentional. I think that's everything for today but as always don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already for more simple and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week. And until next time friends I hope you have an amazing day.